thinking of that. Ah, okay, okay. So similar to post it, yeah. Similar when you peel it off and then you yeah. step off. saying like do I really need to write it all out? The answer is no, what's going on? Can you close that in? I don't know which stuff that or you can always yeah. plug in three for there you go. So so you have to no 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 so just two zero. That 
say? Once you get the 3 here, this tells us that the y-intercept is 3. How do I write that as a coordinate? Because I need to write these as coordinates. Good. And how do you know it's 0 in the beginning, Katie? Yeah, also, didn't we set x to 0 here? So if you set x to 0 and you got 3, it's 0, 3. Since we set y to 0 here, and we have an answer of negative 4.5 for x, we're going to have negative 4.5 comma 0. Again, remember, whenever you find the x intercept, y is 0. Whenever you find the y intercept, x is 0. All right, so using the two coordinates now, let's graph. Okay, let's grab. You know what? Why don't you uh, go to it? Just hit this little button down here. Which one? So when you see my notes, I use this program down here. Okay? It's called GeoGebra. It's free. You, if you literally type in GeoGebra.org, you can download it for free, and you're able to do a lot of stuff. So Hannah, go down here, type parentheses, 0, comma, 3, enter, and then type parentheses, Negative 4.5, yeah, comma 0, hit enter. Now, hit this move button kind of up here. Oh. Hit the yeah, one next to it, good. Now drag it, slide the graph so we can see it. It's going to be negative, there you go, good, stop. Now, see this right here? Click on this one, hit the drop down. <laughs> Sorry, the one next to the A. Hit the drop down menu. Oh, a little, little drop down. Arrow. Look at all the options you can do. We want a line for two points, right? Hit that. Click on the two points, Anna. Click on B and click on A. And now look at the line. Negative 3x plus 4.5y plus 13.5. Well, that doesn't look like what we had right away, right? But double everything. Double everything in there. You're going to get the exact equation that we had a minute ago. I don't know how to. Or are we going to get the exact one? No. No, you're going to get it. Multiply by two thirds. Sorry. <laughs> Multiply by two thirds. Yeah. Sorry. So if you. Not try. You can't write on me. Okay. No wait. Not try. I click on. Yeah. All no. right. Anyway, don't worry. If you multiply this, you know the equation. I thought it was going to work out to the exact one. This is a form of the exact same equation. If you multiply this by negative two thirds, you get two x. If you multiply this by negative 2 thirds, you get negative 3 y. Multiply this by negative 2 thirds, you get negative 9. It's the exact same equation. It's just a multiplicative uh, factor of the other one. But this is the line that we're looking at. Y intercept of 3, x intercept of negative 4.5. And see what I did by the way I touched here? And it keeps putting out the points everywhere. So you can mess around with this. Okay? There's a lot of stuff you can do with it. Play around with it if you want to do any of your homework on it. You're welcome to. There's also a place to upset 3 guys. Because you playing grid for like pronounce that? Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of them. You, you just go to Google and then you graph paper template and you'll find a bunch. Alright, let's go back to the, uh, the smart board. Don't worry about me. Alright, next slide. So example three. Example three. Here, we're given horizontal and vertical lines as the top of me. Horizontal and vertical lines. Horizontal lines are called constant functions. It's good to know that. You're going to use that over and over again. Okay? Constant functions, right? Now, here's what I want to do here. I want to look at these individually, part A and B, and I want to ask somebody for help. For part A, if I wanted to write that equation, but I wanted to have x in there somewhere, like we've had in the other ones, you know, you had like 2x plus 3y and such, how would I write the first one for part A? Let's see.
2y and 3x, or 4y and 5x. Well, if x isn't there, the coefficient is really zero. Is that clear? Because this really drops off. Make sense? OK. Now, here's what I want you to try. Pick any value for x. Make an xy table for this. Give me a value for x. Julia. Um, three. three. Plug in a 3. What do you get for y? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, no, you don't get 0 for y. Sorry. I caught you off guard. Sorry. If you plug in a 3 right here, yeah. what does this become? Zero. Y plus 0 equals 5. So y is just uh, 5. Pack, give me another one. Plug in a negative 3 here, what happens to it? Um, that's zero. So what do you still get? Five. Plug in another number. Any number. A million. Plug in a million. What's y going to be? Five. So what's the deal here? Five. How come, Joe? Straight line. And how come from the equation you know that? Five. What does the equation say? Five. Yeah. Five. Yeah, it says y equals 5, right? Y is always 5. So if you were to plot this graph, you go 3, 5, negative 3, 5, 1 million, 5, 10, 5, 1, 5, 0, 5, negative 2, 5. And what happens? You get this, right? You get all these dots that are ahead of 5, which make a horizontal line. Thus, it is constant. It is not changing. That's why it's called a constant function. So in your notes, you want to write down when you have Y equals some number, Whenever you have y equals some number, it's a horizontal line at that height, or whatever that number is. Whenever you have y equals some number, it's a horizontal line going through 5, or going through whatever the number is. Okay, going through 5. Going through 5. If it had said y equals 72,000, I'd have to go up to 72,000 and draw a horizontal line. If it said y equals pi, I'd have to go through approximately 3.14 and draw a horizontal line. Is that clear? It's always a horizontal line when it says y equals some number. What might you guess the next one is going to look like just by the fold Ian? A vertical line. Let's prove it, though. Let's prove it, but Ian is correct. Negative 7 over 2. Uh, 3 point five. Good. Make sure you say negative. Yeah. So, for part B, for part B that we're working on now, okay, part B, I'm going to say it's x plus whatever's missing with the 0 pi <coughs> equals 7 over 2. Negative 7 over 2. But I'm going to write that as a decimal. Okay? Now, pick any value for 1. Same thing we're going to do. Take a value for y. It doesn't matter what it is. What do you get for x, Nick? Yeah, so I pick a 2. I'm going to get negative 3.5. Pick a 7. I'm going to get negative 3.5. Pick a million. I get negative 3.5. So x is always negative 3.5. So if I were to have one, I'd go over 1. Sorry, let's do a little bit of 1, 2, 3, 4. I go in between there halfway. I put a dot. I put a dot. I put a dot. Another dot. I keep putting all these dots up and down. And what I get is a vertical line. Yes? That was pretty good, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it's like you have to like guess. And it, as you move up, it also changes the, 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 the deviation from, the, from where you want it. Knowing. Yeah. The reason, first of all, a vertical line is not a function, because it fails the vertical line to this point, which we're going to get into being a set of functions. It's really a constant function traditionally because when you graph things, you graph them as functions of time. So you might graph like stock market profits as a function of time. And if the stock market is constant every day, the graph of it would look like that, right? As opposed to a stock market that might fluctuate. 
So usually we graph things according to time. Time is along the x-axis called a constant function. Good question. Okay. A vertical line. Yeah. Now, here's a question for you, maybe even tougher. What's the slope of this horizontal line? The slope of a horizontal line? Zero. Zero. And take a look, everybody. When we wrote this equation here earlier, we wrote y plus 0x equals 5, right? Well, there's the slope right there, 0. That's why it's a horizontal line. This one doesn't help me too much with slope, but just tell me what's the slope of a vertical line? Undefined, or undefined. What's another thing we could say? Not neutral. Neutral would make me think it's one because it's even. It's not positive. Or neutral might be actually zero. Zero. What's another word instead of undefined? Anybody oh. here? Isn't that like something like the non-existent? I know what you're talking about. You say about. it doesn't exist. That's not one you uh, say that. But what I'm thinking is infinite. You could say that the slope approaches infinity. Uh, and here's how I think about it. Ready? Zero slope, right? Negative slope, positive slope, positive one, positive two, positive three, four, five, six. As they keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger, it's getting get closer and closer to infinity. That's called the limit, and you'll learn about that in pre-calculus and calculus. But you think about it as the limit approaches infinity. Tonight, here's what I want you to do in text. I want you to look at examples four and five in the notes. This example, it tells you that the point P lies on the line. So it tells you that 2 and 5 are points. So if it lies on the line, we just take the 2 there and the 5 there, we can solve for k. So look at example 4 and look at example 5. Example 5, use graph paper for this. You're going to graph these two lines in any way you want, intersect or plot by points, and find the intersection. Can you do us? 